Rob, I was actually kind of wondering if I was going to remember the pattern of the <laughs> theme song. <laughs> I mostly <clears throat> just sit here and wait until you talk. If it, had I... been, if it had been so long that I can't remember when the thing starts. Yeah. Well, welcome to the Common Good Podcast. After a like two-week hiatus, two-and-a-half-week hiatus, I think our last time was talking about the uh, eclipse that was coming, so it was like Thursday, two weeks ago. Today's Friday, and it's Friday like March uh, si- or April 6th, I think, April 5th. And uh, going to do a little uh, politics today. So Rob Ryer sees here on a, on a Friday, Friday yeah. politics. Yep. Hey. Uh, we, got, we got politics to talk about. I've been on vacation and then uh, mm-hmm. doing a little family time. And uh, it's been a nice break from my brain from politics, to tell you the truth. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I really feel it. I mean, I feel like uh, like the 16th or 17th of March kind of went away from all this stuff came back and it's all the same <laughs> that's right i mean there's a few things that have changed okay. like the things that donald trump is is selling now are different than okay. they were before that's true it was nfts and sneakers before and now it's you know bibles and junk stock um and uh you know but but bibles every time- and junk stock that, that's good is that is that is that new material for you or are you borrow that, that is new something? no that's new that's- material for me pretty um, good right there yeah and uh you know it uh you know but other than that you know the the, the furniture's been rearranged in the room a little bit but it's all basically the same i mean dude it's it's funny how uh waxed fruit and not fresh fruit politics feels sometimes you know you're just mm-hmm. like it it just it has the it has the lasting potential yeah. uh, to keep going Okay, let's talk a little bit about this uh, Trump Trump selling the selling the Bible. Uh, that got me on CNN last week, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it did. So if yeah. people are in the in the in the news stream, in the in the YouTube stream, they may be like, "Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I had a little couple of tap ins uh, from yeah, you, good about you've stuff. been having a whole moment. I mean, you you were you were on the Chris Hayes podcast, which yep. he then spliced into his show. Yes. Then you were on CNN, and then apparently Chris Hayes mentioned you in uh, his appearance on pod save america the biggest yeah. well I'd say the second biggest political podcast in the country yeah they did <laughs> i i was uh, uh i i don't I, I subscribe to that podcast pod save america yeah. but i don't always listen to it right um and but i was starting to receive messages from friends that during that interview yeah the the interviewer dan i think said to brought it up, said, Hey, you had this guy on your, on your podcast, like from two weeks ago, it was, that was a very nice honor. Yeah. For the work that yeah. we're doing and that, that we're up to. And it really was, it was confirmation both the way Chris Hayes responded. So folks, if you haven't listened to the Chris Hayes podcast with uh, talk where I'm on talking about Vocom and good and the work we do, it's worth it. If you're, if you're at all interested in this, <laughs> I promise you, you're going to like that. That's going to be right in your wheelhouse. Um, and it was just a great, great conversation. And, uh, and then, you know, a couple of weeks ago, Rob, when we were down in Eagle Pass, Texas, for the trucker uh, lie that that went on for the mm-hmm. for the scam, and went down to to have a presence down there, a couple of guys were pointing their cameras at our at our bus at a at a gas station, and Dan and I just popped out and kicked into mode, you know, like, hey, what you guys doing? Pointing cameras at us, you know, we're we're here we're here ready to talk, and uh, that turned out to be a YouTube channel called Channel Five News that a friend yep. had mentioned to me previously. And that video that they put out about the trucker brigade, I haven't looked in a week or so, but it had 2 million views, I think, something like mm. that. Something like 2 million wow. views already. That's fantastic. A lot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so. But you were on CNN talking about the Trump Bible. Oh, that's right. That's right. And uh, yeah, talking about the Trump Bible. Because it really captured the national attention that, that Trump yeah. is out pitching a Bible. It, 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 it just, all, it has all the pieces to it, Rob. All the pieces <laughs> right there. This huckster pitching a Bible, a Bible that had uh, a hard time finding its way into the world, by the way. 2021, Harper Collins was hired by the producers of this Bible, which then was called, I think, the USA Bible, or maybe just the Lee Greenwood Bible at the time, but it was Lee Greenwood <laughs> yeah, uh, inspired, you know, from uh, God Bless the USA. It may have been the Bless the USA Bible, some, I don't know, some nonsense like this, but all the same material and all the same stuff. So they wanted to use the new, the new international version and so they have to get that from Harper Collins. And so Zondervan, who manages that, was, and apparently this is Zondervan, a, a publisher of Bibles, 
does this a lot. Like yeah. they they get contracts from people and they produce a Bible that might be yeah. themed for students or themed yeah. for yeah, the teen study Bible, the men's devotional Bible, the yeah, I mean, yeah, I your the, your, or, your organization can actually have a Bible with yeah. your stuff in it. Like that's yeah. that part's not all. So yeah. for all of us who it's are bothered uncommon. by the fact that people are adding things into the material that comes in the Bible, uh, just <laughs> so we all know, oh, that's a that's a regular practice and money making yes. uh, line. Yes. Yeah, I that. used to work. I I many moons ago um, worked at Family Christian Store. Oh. And uh, in Fayetteville, Arkansas, and, really? uh, and they ran a little special that if we the archaeological study Bible had come out, which was a big, thick Bible, it's NIV, um, mm. and it had uh, the New International Version, and it had all sorts of archaeological information, pictures, and you know, and all sorts of stuff all strewn through the Bible. And we had a little they they family Christian store sponsored a little contest. Where uh, if a sales associate could sell fifty archaeological study Bibles, they would get a uh, a leather bound one with their name on it for free. Oh. Do you do you own 100. a leather bound archaeological study Bible? I do, <laughs> and so does a friend of mine because I sold a hundred of them. What? Yeah. Okay, quick, just quick. For I'm a good salesman, Doug. I'm a I good was going to say. Yeah, quick for for those who who may not know, what does it take to get people who have wandered into a family family Christian Bible store? What, what's it called? Family? Yeah, family Christian store. I don't. I think they've gone out of business now. Somebody who wanders into a family Christian store. So you know, you're you're fishing in a barrel. Clear. Yeah. Yep. But but what's the thing that gets them to drop? Probably sixty nine, seventy nine, eighty nine dollars for a Bible. Like seventy nine. Yeah. Seventy nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. What what is it that gets them over the hump that you figured out how to do a hundred times over? What, what, what was your, what was your go-to trick? Because I'm just thinking if Vote Common Good has to start selling a common good, <laughs> common good, Bible. common good Bible, you just put me out on the street corner. It's been 20 years since I did this. Um, I, I think it was just the, like, I, I really hyped the, Oh, this is the, like, this is a new thing that's never been done before. And, hmm. and kind of go in that, yeah. go in that route that, you know, you're going to have something that, you know, nobody else has because Frank, I remember there was a, there was a doctor who came into the store and he was buying, he was looking to buy gifts for, uh, colleagues. And I sold him eight. Right. <laughs> got a little science, got a little science, got a little science yeah. vibe to it. <laughs> okay. And that's, that's uh, yeah. because as so it anyways, turns out, so, yeah, people are can, more interested in the, in the extras in a Bible. Yes. It's like buying the, the DVD f when they used to do this for films and it was the director's cut, you would, you would spend the extra money and you would buy the film because you wanted the extras, right? That's, that's how I've always thought yeah. about all this. Um, uh, all right. Yeah. So, okay. So a lot of people are learning right now that the Bible, that Bibles are not um, always just what's called fair use. Mm -hmm. People own them and sell them like companies, for-profit companies like Harper Collins publishers, owns a number of translations of the Bible. The King James Version, however, is public is public Go material. Public and that's domain. probably because it's just generally worthless as a translation. I mean, it's just real. <laughs> it also could be that it's more than 400 years old. Yeah, it could be that. It could be that. Uh, and they just they just couldn't couldn't find the old King James family line well enough to keep that thing up, to keep that thing afoot. Yeah. So so that is in public domain. So what then happened was after Harper Collins said no to publishing that Bible because they became aware it, it moved out of their like department that puts together packaging of Bibles, and a bunch of us. I remember me and Shane Claiborne specifically were deeply in touch with publishers there personally on the phone, like saying, you please do not do this. Like this is full of Christian nationalism. They weren't even really aware of it at that level in the organization. They put a kibosh to it, stopped it. It went away, then was repackaged under the King James translation. And then all the other mm -hmm. stuff is added in. And that's the one that Trump is out, is out, uh, is out pitching. So somehow that thing just fits the, the, all the things we think about Trump and religion and voters and 
Um, oh, it's it's got it all. It's got I mean, it's it's got Trump involved, uh, you know, hawking this thing. It's got the founding documents of the United States of America like like that is you know like we talk about in our christian nationalism training that there's you know there's many christian nationalists who believe that there's two countries in the history of the world that are uniquely born out of the out of the mind and heart of god and that would be israel in the, in the united states and so if you believe that you yeah. know it totally makes sense that the found that the constitution the declaration of independence the pledge of allegiance all of that would be not the pledge of allegiance the founding document mm -hmm. but would be in the you know in in this bible as you know appendices and then it's got the layer of just tacky and that is <laughs> like the lyrics to lee greenwood's yeah you know from the lakes of minnesota to the hills of tennessee it's uh god bless the usa it's just that 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 tackiness of just like ugh, the just the cringe you know it moves beyond the um it, it moves beyond the uh, scholarly or intellectual or, mm -hmm. or or reasonable to the like you know the the cheesy jesus meme of you yeah. know jesus hugging trump you know it's just ugh. Yeah. and that 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 layer of lee greenwood is it's like the uh it's like the wallpaper border in the <laughs> you know in the living room of this thing it's just ugh. yeah look uh okay so you you gave your confession about selling a, a, a bibles I'll give you my uh, God bless the USA confession. Love it. You ready? Uh, You've been learning it on the guitar? So, <laughs> oh my gosh, I totally. Okay, so uh, the th not confession, but you did remind me of something. Um, I had written two songs. I now have written a bunch, like a dozen. It's crazy. I'm yeah. in a real flow. But a couple weeks ago, on the we were on the bus. I was working on a song based on kind of the flow of a song called Alice's Restaurant from mm -hmm. the '60s, and it's kind of this talking narrative thing. Yep. So I'm working on something about this around Christian nationalists in America, and what do we do, and what do we do about the uh, some line in there, like the uh, election denying something, something, something. But they're also Americans, right? And a little line in it has uh, kind of ticks up at, at when I say God bless the USA and I kind of sing it like the uh like the Lee Greenwood song. <laughs> nice. uh, so I guess technically yes I I am working on the Lee Greenwood uh God bless the USA but it's in a, a song of, of satire but somewhere I, I think it was maybe 1995 fourth 1993 four five I was a youth pastor um uh I was at a big church and I was like an intern or an associate so I got the duty of taking our uh, a group that was like a like a music performance group. It was called Acts Twenty Nine, uh, out on a a tour, and we went to the East Coast, and they would do these like presentations at churches stuff, right? So w at one point, we are driving in a bus that I'm driving. I mean the can't get out of a bus story just you know stuck in a loop a life is we should be kicking in for people i'm driving this bus as a mid-20s year old youth pastor it's the dawn of the day sun's mm -hmm. coming up we're out early 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 on the fourth of july driving across the niagara bridge by the niagara falls i mean no. okay so Somehow I had some kind of a radio playing thing that could play music. And somehow I had it. I don't I can't remember the details how in 1990, mid-90s, I would have had this. And I was emotionally struck playing God Bless the USA, driving across that that thing. All all the pieces came together. It was uh, you know, singing at the top of my voice as a Minnesotan from the lakes of Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so uh, you know, I get it that that song could be really meaningful to people. Um, yeah, and I know a lot of soldiers. In fact, this was one of the pushbacks about Trump selling the Lee Greenwood Bible. 
people who work in the military, chaplains and others are like, look, these, mm -hmm. these military cats, they end up over there in places where they don't want to be doing things that no one should have to do because the United States policy around war is inhumane on all involved. And they are belting this thing out with all they've got, you know? Yeah. So I get it. People think this is all, all really good. No. Um, and, and the problems are more than just that, you know, as you brought up so, so, articulately there it's not just that trump is selling a bible like who cares right it's that he's selling a christian nationalist bible that's yes. really that really yeah. shows the sign yeah. and trying to compete for that for that audience so yeah, yeah. and, and also... it's not the it's not the only thing he's selling uh because you know so in a you know donald trump is is in a world of hurt financially because he's yeah. had these judgments against him um that are nearly a half billion dollars yeah. um and and you know he's had some of the some of that reduced a bit and there's been you know he's like he had a 176 million dollar bond that wasn't filed correctly and i mean all that all that stuff that can, is you know, that true i honestly missed yeah. this they, they screwed yeah, up the so paperwork they, or somehow they, got it yeah wrong. so it, oh yeah the the amount he had to post was reduced from the full amount to 176 million oh. um and then there's yes and then they he got he got somebody to i don't know to okay I, the the guy who put it up said that he you know the collateral was cash which doesn't make any sense because if he has the cash just do it yourself you don't need the guy to post it for you yeah. anyways so yeah the paperwork wasn't filed correctly <laughs> shocker and uh wow. and so that is being corrected now and i'm sure it will be and you know yeah. the trump tower isn't gonna be for sale i i love the spirit hollywood halloween you know means mm -hmm. as you know mm -hmm. as much as the next guy but so anyway so in the midst of all of this donald trump needs to come up with a, a way to make some money and frankly this is a clever thing that he that they came up with yes. was to take truth social his Twitter ripoff uh, right. social media platform since he pitched to Elon Musk that Elon Musk should buy it from him. And Elon Musk said no. Uh, the second option, the backup option is to take it public. And so, so <clears throat> I, I just read a little bit from Newsweek from an article earlier today just to kind of give us a sense of where we're at with this. Donald Trump's net worth has fallen by just over $2 billion dollars. After the value of shares in his Trump Media and Technology Group, which owns his Truth Social website, dropped dramatically over the space of just eight days. On March 22nd, uh, this media group merged with Digital World Acquisition Company, an existing shell company, clearing the way for it to go public and causing its value to surge, making Trump billions of dollars virtually overnight. It's all on paper with yeah. this guy. However, the share shed much of this gain when it emerged that the company lost $58.2 million in 2023 wow. while only bringing in revenue of $4.1 million, raising questions about it. I mean, it's totally the $4.1 kind of million dollars is all the revenue they brought in on Truth Social. Yeah. 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 With operating expenses of, you know, $62.3 million, um, something along those lines. So, um, Basically, it, it opened at, um, well, the high of each, the value of each share reached a high of uh, $71.90. Mm -hmm. And I believe it is now down in the $46.20 range. Wow. Um, still still higher know. than I would have thought. Yeah, so, I mean, I we aren't. We aren't pennies. Yeah, we aren't down <laughs> to. Levels. Yeah, that's right. We're not down to like, you know, day trading, penny stock, uh junk bond kind of stuff yet but wow give it time give it yeah, time. that's right that's right give it time it's just going to be liquidated out and yeah yeah so now, he's he's, often, he's, he's and, money hunting i get it yeah yes he is yeah because he i mean he, and you know we've seen this over and over again we saw with the nfts and we and we laughed about those we saw with the sneakers and we laughed about those and then the the stock and then the bible and you know i really it makes you wonder what he's going to sell next do you have any predictions on what donald trump sells next i was going to say his soul but we all know he didn't have one so uh he's dead out of luck there uh no i i you know he's going to sell mar-a-lago <laughs> probably or, room by or room. a tower or a kid he might sell yeah. a, he might sell a child <laughs> 
<laughs> we might just we just have to give Ivanka and Jared fully over to the Saudis for some for yeah, something exactly. you know some no I, yeah. yeah ah just uh, yeah. just so much with the guy yeah uh, so his chances of becoming president of the United States again uh, took a blow this week uh, took a hit um, because um, what many have described as a Trump Trump sympathetic organization no labels yeah. Um, has decided that uh, they're not going to run a presidential candidate after all. No Labels is an organization um, that got founded by Joe Lieberman, former senator from Connecticut who died last week. Um, and uh, you didn't hear that? No, nope, um, nope. yeah, I've, I've been out of the flow. Yeah, yeah. Joe Lieberman passed away last week. Oh. Um, uh, I, I think he was 82. Joe Lieberman, who was Al Gore's uh, vice presidential candidate, which, you know, in the midst of the uh, uh, hanging Chad um, wow. ballot counting stuff, produced one of the great T-shirts of all time that said sore loserman <laughs> and so in the in the gore lieberman font come on that's fantastic <laughs> that's just Wonderful. good like you might be on yeah. the other side of that but that's clever that's clever uh, that, that, that's touche um, yeah so joe lieberman passed away and then mm. uh, his project no labels which really wanted to bring together um some kind of unity ticket and they had tried to get Larry Hogan uh, to run for president. They had tried to get Joe Manchin to run for president. They had tried to get Chris Christie to run for president under their banner. And, you know, Liz Cheney and others have just consistently told them no. And uh, and so they have announced now that, um, you know, they've wasted a lot of time and a lot of money. Um, you know, I, yeah. And aren't going to have anything to show for it. So no labels, um, you know, is is going away for the time being. no labels yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no category even yeah. well that's uh, you know to my mind good to hear good to hear just yeah. just just yeah. simplify this thing that doesn't mean that rfk jr is going away though that's right, right. he's not going away so uh, he's gonna while, find some way to run yeah so yeah he's going to be well i'll, I'll tell you the way he found i'm so he named his vice president uh his his vice presidential nominee um a uh, a lawyer named nicole shanahan um yeah I'll, I'll just give you a minute to you know roll through your mental rolodex of her resume um you know her like her wikipedia is just you know i mean she, an election she doesn't denier? she doesn't even need to have a wikipedia because we all know so much about her isn't she uh, the election denying uh, no i don't i don't think she's an election denier um nicole shanahan um best known for being married to one of the founders of google um hmm. allegedly um rumored to have had an affair with elon musk oh that that person um she's the one who um was responsible for and bankrolled the um super bowl commercial touting uh rfk jr's uh campaign for president that made his family so mad because it uh, was patterned after a campaign ad from his uncle in the 1960s. Uh, she's on, she is the vice presidential candidate. Uh, and I mean, longtime Democrat um, mm. who, um, you know, is kind of known for, you know, kind of liberal causes, was a, a Biden supporter. Mm. Um, also, apparently kind of flirts with the anti-vax thing which you know is right yeah. on brand for rfk jr but she's rich she's rich mm -hmm. and what he needs is money mm -hmm. he needs money to finance what yeah. it takes to right. get on the ballot in all of these in all of these states uh it's super complicated to to be on the ballot to in 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 various states there's 50 states and there's, you know, I used to joke when I was doing some work with a third party that was trying to get on the ballot. Um, I was doing a project with them, and I used to joke that there's 50 states and there's like 72 different rules on like what it wow. takes to get on the ballot. It is hmm. like it's complicated, hmm. and it requires money. 
Like you got, you, you have to have yeah, a well-financed right. machine right. Yeah, and Nicole and everything. Yep. And Nicole Shanahan coming onto the campaign. If she's on the ticket, there's no limit on what she can spend. That's it. If, if she was just a RFK junior supporter, um, yeah, there, it is. there would be a limit of $6,600 that she could donate to him. Maybe it might even be 3,300 because there's no primary uh, for an independent candidate. So, I mean, but there's limits. And then there's limits on what a super PAC can do that she could give to in an unlimited way, but there's limits on what they can do in terms of mm -hmm. coordinating with the campaign. The best way to get the money into the campaign is to make her vice president. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, there you go. Uh, it's likely how they're going to do it. <clears throat> I did see a Daily Beast headline that says, RFK Jr.'s campaign says that the email they sent referring to the January 6th rioters as, quote, activists was a, quote, error. <laughs> yes. I saw something where they, that it said RFK Jr. disavows its own fundraising email. <laughs> it, it is an error to refer to the rioters as activists because yes. they were rioters. But also, I guess they're saying, we didn't mean to say that, but some of the people who write our emails. Now, Rob, if you're on the Vote Common Good email list, you're going to get a we're couple trying. of emails a week from us. And yeah. we, we, we hope they brighten your day. We hope that in the midst of the of the melu of madness, that this little Vote Common Good shining star pops in your inbox and you say, oh, I wonder what we can give money to now to support the good people at Vote Common Good. I read those carefully to make sure they say what we want. If you mm -hmm. want to be president, have somebody yeah. whose responsibility it is to read the emails and are saying what you mean, or yeah. maybe that's what you did. Yes. And the yeah. way you do this is the way Trump said, I disavow the proud boys, stand back and stand by. Well, I didn't mean to say stand back. I was just using a, like it's ways of messaging to two groups, mm -hmm. two separate messages. So they can call yes. them activists and then take it back. So when someone says, why'd you call them activists? They say that was a mistake. But to the activists, they say, you know, it wasn't a mistake. So that's yeah. what I think is going on here, which is good news. Good news, I think, for the outcome that I desire, which is that Robert Kennedy Jr. will be the off-ramp for people who would otherwise be voting for Trump. Yeah. Um, uh, and, I, I hope you know, this... Happens. This comes on the heels of RFK Jr. Um, saying that on CNN that Joe Biden, uh, President Joe Biden, is a greater threat to democracy than Donald Trump. Um, and, you know, again, I, in his rationale, his reason for saying that is because um, some claim that um, the Biden administration uh, influenced social media platforms to censor not but not censor but uh, but to you know silence throttle um mute uh shadow ban like all the different words that get used in this context uh their political opponents in including his supporters uh, so basically you know like there's a yeah, yeah, listen mm. I'm sure that there are people, uh, people in the Biden administration who are willing to use some underhanded tactics to sure. that they think will be helpful for their cause, which is, you know, defeating Donald Trump and reelecting Joe Biden. Do is, is Joe Biden involved in that? There's zero chance president of the United States, Joe Biden, is personally involved in that. Right. He might and, have... And RFK Jr. should know that because he's apparently not personally involved in sending the emails that his organization sends. So he would probably understand what goes on when you're at the social media messaging level. Exactly. Donald Trump personally involved in right. organizing and encouraging an assault on the capital of the United States personally involved in an effort to uh, disenfranchise 84 million yeah. voters 
personally involved in trying to get uh, elected officials from fulfilling their oaths of office and doing what they needed to do to certify and uh, and and uh, and and kind of rubber stamp the results of a a free and fair election. Personally involved in those anti-democratic, democracy undermining things. And for RFK Jr. to try to appeal to Trump supporters with this disingenuous thing of Joe Biden's a greater threat to democracy than Donald Trump is, I mean, just, it's ridiculous on its face and it's offensive. Yeah, It's like, he's, he's this is like, this statement moves RF for me, moves him beyond the like kind of amusing sideshow mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to like, no, this guy's a problem. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, and I'm, I have gone from amused by RFK Jr. to super frustrated with him. Mm-hmm. And he's running a clown show of a campaign. Right. And, and the, uh, as you can see from his vice presidential pick, who is someone no one's ever heard of, who is not, listen, I'm sure Nicole Shanahan is a wonderful, I'm sure I would enjoy having a conversation with her. She is not qualified to be vice president of the United States in the same way that I'm not qualified to be vice president of the United States. Mm -hmm. If RFK Jr. had called me and said, hey, you want to run for vice president? (laughs) I probably would have thought about it, but I would have said no. What kind of money do you think I have, RFK? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I just just look rich. I'm not actually rich. That's right. (laughs) So in that ridiculousness, the ridiculousness of this email that's sent out calling the January 6th uh, insurrectionists as activists and 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 saying Joe Biden is, you know, a greater threat to democracy than than Donald Trump. RFK Jr. is going to have to get more outlandish to keep himself in the news because of the clown show campaign that he's running and. Uh, I, I, but look again, I, I think that's beyond. really good news for the outcome I would like, which is to take yes. 10,000, 15,000 Trump supporters across three states in the Midwest, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and to have them say, I, I'm not going to vote for Trump this time. I'm going to vote for RFK yeah. Jr. That would be great. 10, 15, 20,000 people who were, or otherwise would have checked the, the Trump box will check the RFK box. Great. Good for you. Yeah, yep. I, I don't think there's a lot of room for him to message to the. I wish the Biden administration was acting differently, or we had a different candidate crowd. I yeah. don't think there's so much attractive there, but I do worry that there's people who voted for Biden in 2020. I know some people personally who are now very intrigued with voting for RFK, um, yep. and they they would have previously been republic standard Republican voters didn't want to vote for Trump ever then voted for Biden in 2020, didn't vote for Hillary in 2016, voted for Biden in 2020, and now we're looking at RFK. So he could be, it could cost Biden some, some like that. So, you know, that's like, yeah. you know, so, so you need some of these people to be, uh, yep. but it's not because they think Biden's a risk to, they, they, they're, they're the people in the crowd of, we just need something different, you know? Like, yes. Um, you know, again, not the thing they say when they're going in for uh, an important surgery. They're not, they're, they're kind of looking for standard practice training uh, yes. for a lot of these people. They're, they're not looking for something new. <laughs> yeah. And, hey, listen, I'd like you to just kind of experiment on me, you know, like, uh, let's just see, you know? Yeah. When I went to the dentist this morning to, uh, to, to get my, uh, to get stitches removed from, uh, a tooth that I had removed, um, three weeks ago. Uh, I didn't want him. I, I, I like, yes, please just do the normal stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I'm a, I'm an early adopter on things. That's right. But like, you know, there's some things you just want to try and steady. through. Keep it steady. Now, listen, don't let your heart be troubled, Doug. Oh. New polling out. Okay. Joe Biden has opened up a 10 point lead in 10 in Pennsylvania. According to Donald him. Trump. Polls. Uh, yeah. I don't polls. believe them. <laughs> I know, I know. I am not an election result denier. I am a poll result denier. I just got to tell you, these things. Yeah. Now, what's interesting about this poll, and I'm I'm looking to see who it's by. Um, 
I didn't. I was just. I was just saying. It was just a poll. It doesn't. It doesn't matter and, to me. It could be. Um, yeah. And Golden I'm, Star I'm, or. I'm. I'm looking or... right now. I'm. I'm. I'm looking right now at my number one news source, which is, um, uh, which is the Drudge Report, and which reminds me, you should check out. There's a. There's a. Uh, there's a podcast out uh, called um, "Where Is Matt Drudge," uh, which is really, really good. Very oh, really? interesting. Um, is he vacationing? Yeah, so, is, that, is that what it is? It's like a uh, it's no. Like he's a travel, like super reclusive and oh. hasn't been seen in years. Um, so the latest poll it's Franklin and Marshall College. Um, now, what's okay. interesting about this is that in this um, in a head to head contest between Joe Biden and Donald Trump, um, Joe Biden has a ten point lead, forty eight percent to thirty eight percent, with an additional wow. thirteen favoring someone else. Um, outside of the margin of error of 4%. However, when the someone else is named, when the two other options are presented with the respondents, Jill Stein is the Green Party candidate and RFK Jr. is the independent, the race moves within the margin of error with Biden at 42 and Trump at 40, Kennedy at 9 and Stein at thir- at 3. Um, wow. Which is super interesting. It It, it appears as if at least in this polling, um, mm. Biden's trending in the right direction, which is great. Um, and Stein and Kennedy are are still a drag on on Biden's support. More on Biden's so. supports. Well, okay, that 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 counters that my, may change. My I think the more the more that RFK says in an attempt to p- appeal to um, Trump supporters. Um, the more he says things like Joe Biden is a greater threat to democracy than Donald Trump. And the more he calls January 6th okay. insurrectionist uh, activists, he's going to turn off that. Like he's going, like, I think he's going to turn off those supporters. I think it's seen all this to say polls are simply a snapshot of a moment that is often quite blurry at the time anyways. Yeah, that's right. And, but I like what I see here. This is in, in this moment, this looks good. Like yeah, things I mean, are trending I mean, this is the, the right problem direction. with with polling early on is you ask yeah. anyone what will your future behavior be? And for some of us on certain topics we're very consistent. For other people, they answer these polls aspirationally. Mhm. Their their answer fills a different purpose in their life than giving the pollster accurate information. We all do this on, yeah. on many issues. What are you going to buy when you go to the grocery store? Well, I could, I make a list and that's like what I would tell the pollster. I'm going to buy, I'm going to buy these things, you know, then you get to the grocery store and you're like, there's a single sleeve of Oreos that I could buy just one sleeve. I'm not buying a whole package. All of a sudden that gets, Wait a minute, that that's gets, an option. yeah, yeah. That gets pretty interesting, you know, uh, yeah. right. But, and then, uh, other times you look at something and you're like, I put it on here, but I'm just, you know what? I, I'm just not getting the, the high fiber cereal. I'm going for something yeah. else. So, yeah. it's, so it's what polls what, are I mean, doing what, is, is reinforcing a person's narrative of, of themselves just enough where they call this, you know, margin of error thing. And that's leaving out all the, all the, the comments of people that uh, like the squirrely prepper lifestyle um, says that, you know, there are many people who aren't represented in, in, in the chat. Yep. Uh, the squirrely prepper says this, um, that aren't represented. That's the, that's not even taking into account all of that, which is so, so, so true. This is just the people who actually say, I'm going to vote. Here's what I'm going to vote. There's just enough for whom saying the thing to the pollster doesn't match what they're going to do. We tend to call that lying to the pollsters, but people don't lie in their own, in our own views. Yes. Yes. We don't lie. We are not liars. We might say things that are not true, but they're not lies somehow, right? So that's not the story we tell. That, that's why I think polls for the movable or the still thinking about it or the non all that engaged. Um, and then when the time comes, so in other words, then when you're standing in a voting booth, you feel the weight or you're at home with the ballot and you feel the weight. Now you're in the store, you're at the cash register. What are you going to do? And that's the little gap that can be closed. That's why, in my view, that's why polls end up outside the, the yeah. or, uh uh, poll result, voting results end up outside the polling, polling yeah. numbers. Now, I mean, polling numbers are just 
are just numbers. I mean, there's there's other numbers that are really good news for Joe Biden, including the jobs numbers today that just took everybody by surprise. Incredible. Apparently, the the U.S. economy has added another three hundred thousand three hundred thousand jobs over the last uh, month and continues to um, continues to blow away expectations. Yep. Um, you know. I, I one of the things that we've talked about in the past on 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 this show is that consumer confidence, mm-hmm. which which is you know how I feel about the economy, um, that's a lagging indicator. Yeah, like that's, right. that's the caboose of the of the economic train. The reality has to change, has to change significantly and consistently long enough for me to go from feeling anxious about the economy to feeling Mm -hmm. content to feeling optimistic. I got to make sure that like this thing isn't going to bottom out again. Mm -hmm. It takes a long time for consumer confidence to rebound. And, uh, and so even as we get these strong reports, um, you know, that's good. That will only help consumer confidence and consumer confidence is tied to, you know, how you feel for better or for worse, people Mm -hmm. tie how they feel about the president to how they feel about the economy and, and, you know, how they feel about the economy is not how they feel about the stock market. It's how they feel about their own bank account. And, and so as these good economic numbers continue to come in, the economy continues to rebound. I think what we're going to see is Mm -hmm. consumer confidence coming back, which is only going to be good for Joe Biden. All of this trending in the right direction. Yeah, I I agree. I think to the degree that uh, people still are movable voters are still making their decision about who to vote for, for president based on some kind of situation in the world to the degree that that's true. Because I think there's a lot of consumer confidence numbers, especially, or what's going on glo- uh, globally, internationally, with the U.S. You know, around the wars going on in Afghanistan, the war that Israel is inflicting upon Gaza, all these kinds of things. I think that has more to do with reinforcing or undermining people's confidence in the choices that they've already made about who they're going to vote for than it does moving someone, but. To the degree that it does, good jobs numbers and inflation coming down, felt inflation coming down, will be the kind of thing that some people can be like, look, let's let's not go back to let's not go back to COVID days. And and if if the Biden team doesn't wrap the Trump years with COVID in people's emotional responses, they're missing a real opportunity. Yeah. To remind yeah. them that from January through January of 2020, we had to live with Trump in charge of that nonsense. And, yes. uh, and, and somehow, you know, Trump is like, not it's pitched to his people. He's not responsible for anything that happened while he was president because he's the most powerful president in the history of time. Like, it's just simply <laughs> remarkable. Yes. The, the, not the responsible ability. for anything and also the most powerful and effective president ever. Uh, yeah, I I have like the Biden campaign has put out an ad um, where you know kind of asking the classic question of Are you better off? Yeah. Bless you. Did I get Did I you did. did I get the Did I get the mute button fast well, enough there to well catch my played. sneeze? Well played. Um, yeah. So the the Biden campaign has put out a commercial. You know that classic question: Are you better off than you were mm-hmm. four years ago? And they have just said yes. <laughs> and uh, and <laughs> and and contra- contrasted many things. Um, um, I, I it, the thing that they need to be careful about um, is is not outpacing yep. with their their own exuberance about stuff, outpacing people's feelings and making them seem out of touch. Yeah. And, and that's the challenge that hopefully, hopefully someone in the Biden administration, the Biden campaign is thinking about that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. We hope that um, they are. We, we hope. Yeah. I mean, are. I mean, two other crazy things that happened, Doug, while, uh, while we were on this little hiatus and you were out of the loop, um, 
Trump's daughter-in-law became the co-chair of the uh, Republican National Committee, which is just Why hilarious. Not? No, Why not? no comments needed. Uh, and uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene almost took down Speaker Mike Johnson. Um, yeah. She, she still is. She's still got the hammer, just just cocked yeah. and loaded right there, just yep, ready to yep. unleash. Yep. Unbelievable. Um, she has she has filed the uh, the um, whatever it's called the where a speaker to, can you know call for a, uh, yeah. a, a a vacating of the uh, the speakerships. Uh, yes, yeah, she's filed it, and uh, you know she she wants to you know be like Matt Gates and take down a speaker. Well, look on the on the what's good for the country route. The reason Marjorie Taylor Greene gives for filing there's two steps to vacating a speaker in the current rules in the House. One is you have to file the intent, and then the other is you have to call for a vote. So she's only done one of those so far. She did it just before they went on recess. Then she can call for the vote at any point if she decide, if she desires. So that's why I'm saying she's got the hammer over the head. And her rationale for doing this is. She says that Speaker Mike Johnson has violated the essence of what the conservatives in the House want. If she is accurately reflecting her view based on the actions of Mike Johnson, that's good news for America. If Mike Johnson is behaving in ways that do not fulfill the expectations of the most conservative members of the House, that's good news. Because it Which didn't have to has. go that it I mean, didn't he, have to go that way. So yeah, I mean there there's been there the government did not get shut down like like right. Republicans wanted and uh, and and spending bills have been passed and you know Mike Johnson has you know kind of stared down the barrel of his own of his own professed values and said. Now I got to do what's right for the country. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Which should and, say something uh, to conservatives that their values, when they're put to the test yep. of actually being implemented, don't feel the same as when you're just holding them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's one thing when it's a think tank event yeah. sponsored by the Heritage Foundation. And it's another thing when it is actual people's lives. It's going to paychecks. happen. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. you're going to be responsible for it. Yeah. Everybody talks the big game. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Again. Hey, you, you know, things aren't looking good for, and I'm saying this out loud now, so we won't be tempted. That's old. Uh, that's old Ted Cruz, who yeah. apparently has communicated to people in his world um, that uh, he has increasingly desperate fundraising numbers and is concerned yeah. and nervous that he could lose his Senate seat. Yeah. In Texas. If he Ted, could lose he could lose his his Senate seat in Texas to uh candidate for common good. Yeah. Colin to, Allred. To our to our uh our our running back or linebacker, what what, what was Colin? He was Colin a linebacker. Allred. It might linebacker? have been defense back. Former former professional Maybe football player. Back. Yeah. Um, uh, and uh, I mean, spoke at a spoke at a Vote Common Good event in 2018 in uh, in Dallas, Texas, and when he was uh, not yet elected, first time candidate running mm -hmm. for office. He's now a congressman. He's been he was a candidate for Common Good in the last cycle, and um, yeah, all around great guy, Colin Allred. And Colin Allred, if he really can put pressure on Ted Cruz to make Ted Cruz nervous that he's going to lose his seat, if if Ted Cruz is vulnerable in Texas yep. right now, after fending off a fairly aggressive attempt at his job in 2018 from then a congressman, former congressman in, in Texas, in Beto O'Rourke, if he can fend, if, if he's nervous now and he's really in jeopardy, game is over politically for Republicans. Like, that is that is devastating if uh, Ted Cruz doesn't have total command and control of being reelected in the state of Texas with what's going on. If there's a what's revolt your... among Republicans in Texas <clears throat> that won't stick with him or would go with someone like Colin Allred um, statewide. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like Texas it, does this every election, though. That's what I, that's what I was saying. They I just, want to bring it up so we, so we check our, our emotions. And they tease us. 
too much time in Texas. And yeah. Now listen, what I don't want us to do is to be so, you know, the boy who, you know, the state who cried wolf, um, you know, about Texas and be like, and dismiss it. And then this is the time that the wolf arrives and, uh, you know, and Colin Allred could have won if we had just, you know, supported him a bit more. But at the same time, I'm just like, really, Texas, we're doing this again? Really? Uh, yeah. I mean, the, I don't know which the, it is. The four horsemen of disappointment, Texas, Florida, Ohio, no. North Carolina. Seriously. I mean, how much time have we spent oh, <laughs> those in those states? And then it's not even close yeah they're so uh yeah okay uh but if ted cruz feels a little bit in trouble i like it hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah if they're gonna have to dump a bunch of hey we didn't even talk about mitch mcconnell stepping away which happened i think about the time i left from yeah. this from the uh the, the senate leadership at least um let alone out of his out of his seat did they settle yeah. on who they're who they've rallied around in the senate then for uh mm-hmm. No, they have role. not. Okay. So, well, if whoever's in charge of that uh, has to then spend a bunch of energy supporting and defending Cruz in Texas, yeah, then that really... Look, Ted Cruz is a, is a uniquely unlikable person and candidate. It's mm-hmm. it's it's just true. Um, you know, there's that old joke that I heard a long time ago about Ted Cruz where the joke is, why, why, do people, why do people just instantly hate Ted Cruz? It just saves time. Uh, so, you know, you're going to get there at some point anyway, is yeah. sort of the joke, Yeah. but he is really unliked even by people who vote for him. They just find, you know, you know what I mean? Like, he's just, ah, he's the, he's, he's like the car you own because you still have a lease on it and you never did like it, but you signed the lease and it was going to last four years and you just stuck with it and you don't really yeah. like it. And when, if somebody else can drive, you say, please, right. That that's the relationship a lot of voters in Texas have with, have with Ted Cruz, but he keeps winning. Uh, and he did in 2018 handily, handily in a time when everything was going the other direction. So if he's in trouble now, great news. Great, 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 yeah, great news. For sure. Hey, and if you care about what we do, we're going to be in Arizona in uh, the end, middle and end of April. Look at Vocama mm-hmm. good for that. And then we're going to be bopping around a little bit. We're going to be in Missouri. We're going to be in Colorado. And then by May and June, July, August, we're going to spend a lot of time in the Midwest. So if you're in Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, uh, come see us. We'd love to yep. uh, love to play along on those things. Got anything else, Rob? I don't. I like it when we keep our podcast short, 52 to 53 minutes. Ah, fantastic. <laughs> we didn't have Dan here today to, uh, you know, give, make give the us people go a, Give the people a chance to go listen to something. Hey, I listened to a, a podcast the other day that I found really fascinating. It's It's this a podcast called Stuff You Should Know. Are you familiar with yeah. this podcast? Yes. They have one on greed inflation. Greedflation is what it's, what it's called. Around grocery store pricing hmm. and inflation in the grocery stores. And it is stunning of uh, the food manufacturers, the profits that they have made since COVID, during COVID and since COVID, is what explains the inflation prices in grocery stores not supply chain, not costs. The third, yep. there's, there's three things that make gross, that they put the big yep. clumps, like how much is the product, how much is labor, and then how much is, is revenue that's being, profits rather, that are being extracted. So those are the three. And the first two, the materials and labor, are relatively steady or down, and the, and the profits are up. That's, that's where it's all, all coming from. And so that is, that is intriguing to think, should there be some kind of restraints in our capitalism Mm. on some parts of Mm. our economic system and would food delivery system be one of those? Mm. Just an interesting, and you know, my view, best to get there by best practices from corporations. But if you can't, is there an obligation that the food producers have to make sure that people can afford food? <laughs> food. Interesting. Yeah, but anyway, if, if you're if you're into that kind of stuff, Alex, thinking of you on this here, by the way, I think Alex, if you don't listen to stuff you should know, you will dig uh, you will dig that one. It'll it'll be a it's a nice little very popular level kind of deep dive. Um, 
but we just don't want you to fall for those two guys and then start spending time with them and not time with, you know, your other two faves uh, and the political stuff. Uh, is Florida a lost cause, Doug, Rob? Um, listen, I, don't I think... think we should use that phrase when we're referring to Florida <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because yeah. technically, yes. Uh, but, yeah. uh, for now, yeah. I will say Alex, yeah. for yeah. now, I think it's, yeah. it's I, not I, its time. Yeah. It's a, it's a tough one, but the things that are, the Republicans have made really un like profound unforced errors on the yep. abortion issue yep. and with from the whole ivf stuff to you know all the way back to overturning row they have made they have made severe missteps in oh, yeah. in what they have done in terms of the political calculus of it all and if there's with there being um abortion on the ballot in florida if we have seen that states that have abortion on the ballot, man, things can turn in a hurry. Mm -hmm. We saw it in Ohio. We saw it in Kansas. Um, and, you know, Florida might be one of those states. And so we'll, uh, I, I think we'll see. It'll be very interesting to see on states where abortion is on the ballot, what that yeah. does to the rest of people's, uh, the way they vote. It's it's going to be here in Arkansas, uh, and uh, so it's it's going to be really interesting to see what effect that has. You know how much I just uh, love using sports analogies, yeah, I know. politics or just for life. Mm -hmm. When there's a wild pitcher in baseball, it can be extremely costly if there's people on base. If you're throwing wild pitches past the catcher and there's nobody on base, the that mitigates the damage. Yeah. The Republicans are throwing wild pitches. You are absolutely right. It's a disaster. The Democrats don't have anyone on base. They are the Democratic superstructure in Florida is such a mess. They're not positioned to take advantage of what the Republicans are doing. That's why I think they're really in trouble. Just look at who they put up for governor to run against. Well, the last two times someone's run for governor, look at the people. One of them ended up indicted and then found not guilty on the technicalities. And another one of them was a former Republican, you know, Chris, Charlie Chris. Like, it's just wacky, right? What is going on? So that's part of the reason that I think Florida is in, is in trouble, is that the, the overall system statewide that needs to be positioned to take it back has been just failing for two decades and uh so it's my take yeah. that's yeah. because because ron DeSantis was never that good right. he just was better than the other team yep that's why all right um so if you live in florida don't give your money to the florida democratic party for the psychosensitive <laughs> outcome and good <laughs> we'll use it somewhere else. <laughs> we'll, stay. we'll outsource it somewhere else. Anyway, that's 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 my take. I, I you know I'm wrong about many of the important things in life. So go ahead and tack that one up to that that category. All right, Rob. Talk to you later. Bye, Alex. Okay. Bye, uh, Bye. It was quiet. It was it was it was quiet on the chat today, but but yeah. high on the high on the viewers. So yeah. thanks everybody for watching. We'll be back soon, probably. Okay. Bye.